Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to our video series about IT and OT fundamentals and the current session is about system administration. With me is Christian. Hi Jeremy. Yeah, last time uh, as a little catch up we talked about software development, so what operating systems are used in industrial context, what programming uh, languages are typically used, uh, how do I tr keep track of uh, changes. And uh, today, in today's session, we want to we want to focus on system administration. So, Jeremy, first question: What is traditional? What is a traditional IT setup, and how does it look like in the industry? Yeah. So, in industry or office buildings, it kind of looks similar to what you probably have at home. So, what um, you probably have a Wi-Fi router, or how does it work in your in your home? Yeah, exactly. I when I think about it, I I have a Wi-Fi router, and then of course, typically uh, some uh, hardware like a computer, my cell phone, but also smart devices like a TV or a cleaning robot that are connected uh, wireless w uh, with a Wi-Fi router. Yeah, and in in traditional IT setups and in office building and manufacturing, it works almost exactly like that. So you have a router. And in, in professional environments, it's actually split up. You have like switches and firewalls, and your home router is has both of it combined. Um, so a switch just ensures that if you plug one cable in and you and you plug another cable in, that these two computers can talk with with each other. And a firewall additionally provides protection and rules. So who can talk with whom? Um, and your home uh, router, it ensures that nobody from the internet can access your uh, vacuum robot. Um, and you have the same principle in office buildings as well. So you have your printers, your PCs, they're mostly connected via Ethernet because Ethernet is just a little bit more reliable than Wi-Fi. Um, and they're connected with uh, switches and then you have firewalls. Um, and one of these firewalls is then connected to the internet and acts basically as your home home router. Mm -hmm. And what you have additionally is very often for the ERP or MES system, you have an on-premise server. And on that on-premise server, you have then various multiple uh, virtual machines uh, running one uh, MES, the ERP system, some file storage, etc. So for, for a non-technical person, wh what exactly is a virtual machine? Uh, how does it look like? Yeah, so virtual machine is used so that you can install multiple operating systems on one physical device. So you have one server, and one server has, I don't know, 16, 32 cores, whatever, but your MES or EP system only needs needs two of them or four of them. Um, and you want to share, so you kind of want to share the resources. So what you do is you, instead of the operating system like Windows or Linux, you install a so-called hypervisor on it. And with a hypervisor, you can create multiple virtual machines. So you can install one physical hardware, you can install multiple operating systems, and they can work independently of each, each other, and you can start them and you can stop them in entirely individually. So with the same hardware, you can share the resources, and this is what, what a virtual machine basically is. Okay. So uh, on the server in the office, uh, there's like one hardware um, and on the hardware they're running different systems and uh, with the virtual machine, those systems are not able to directly uh, talk to each other. It, uh, it's not directly connected to each other. Yeah, uh, exactly. So you can have multiple operating systems uh, there and then with a firewall, with the help of firewall, you can then define, okay, which virtual machine can talk to to what other virtual machine, which PC can talk to which server. Then you can have like concepts like demilitarized zones where you have, where for additional security, you don't want to have two systems directly connected with, e with each other. You have it very often in manufacturing where you don't want the shop floor to be accessible from the office network. So you always put like one server or one network in between. So instead of accessing directly from the office network something in the on the shop floor, you typically access a server in between. And from that server, again, only that server can connect to the shop floor network, and then you have like a hop in between, which will provide you additional security. 
Okay, so I remember one of our customers in, in Venice, there we set up the demilitarized zone. So they had a shop floor just for me to, uh, to have a better imagination. Um, so they to, to set up a, the, the shop floor with the demilitarized zone, they, they had the shop floor with different machines. So those machines were connected to the, the network, but how does it work exactly with the demilitarized zones then? The um, server on the shop floor, uh, this was one demilitarized zone. Yeah, so how it typically works, and later in industrial IoT, we can take a look um, what you can also additionally do for additional security. But what you typically have is you have electrical cables coming from all the machines. Um, and fun fact, that this is actually done not by the IT department, but by actual electricians. So if you ever want to plan a shop floor or a greenfield, you need to have the electrician. <laughs> so you, you need to know that you have like electricians and you have the IT department. Um, so you have all the cables coming in and then it, they all go to, uh, to the uh, server rack into a patch panel. And from there on, they are um, put onto, onto a switch. And from there on, it, they're connected to the firewall. And what you have then on the firewall, um, you have there, uh, it, it knows, okay, these cables, they're all coming from from the shop floor and they will all be put into the same network. They get an IP address from the same range. So every time you connect something in there, it will get an IP address, IP address from there. And then you define, uh, you might have a server there, um, which is running like a virtual machine, for example, um, the United Manufacturing Hub. And on uh, what they then do is, uh, from, from outside, from the office network, you can only access that certain virtual machine. Um, for example, you can only access the Grafana dashboard on the United Manufacturing Hub. And from there on, um, all the data from the shop floor gets sent to that, that server as well. Um, so you can basically access all the data from there, but you cannot go from the office directly to the shop floor. So you have this zone in between, um, which provides additional security. So that no one can directly access to the machine and do some some dangerous things with the machine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Wow, very interesting. I think we could dive a lot deeper in there, but for that I would recommend our documentation where uh, we provide a lot more uh, information about that topic. Um, I would say um, if you, uh, for the listeners, if you are interested in diving deeper, have a look at our Learn platform. Um, and if you don't follow us on Discord yet, uh, please do so. Uh, provide us feedback. How do you like those episodes? Uh, how do you set up your IT OFT infrastructure? Do you use demilitarized zones? Um, do you think it's the most secure way right now? Um, so let us know your, your feedback, your experiences. We are always happy happy to, to read and, and hear that. Yeah, and... Let's see you. We see you in the next episode uh, regarding software architecture. Yes. Bye bye. Bye.